Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at the latest version of Bitdefender for 2021. This is the total security suite, so it's got all the protection components. We're going to put it to a test against a lot of live malware, so we'll see how it holds up. The interface itself is mostly unchanged. I'm not a huge fan of the theme, but that's up to preference. We will be looking at the protection components as our primary area of interest. So we've got the general real-time antivirus. We've also got advanced threat defense to protect against zero-day attacks. This is their behavior blocker plus exploit detection solution. Now there's another really exciting component here that is ransomware remediation. So this is supposed to be a worst case scenario component where even if you have a ransomware performing encryption activity on the system, this is supposed to be able to detect that and reverse it, ensuring that your data isn't destroyed at the end of the day. So I'm really looking forward to testing this out. We will definitely see how effective it is. So make sure you stick around for the end of the test. It's also worth mentioning that Bitdefender comes with a firewall if you get the internet or total security suites. A lot of internet security products these days will just direct you to Windows firewall, but that's not the case here. So you still get a custom firewall with Bitdefender. It's also got anti-spam, but that's not really something we'll be looking into since it only works with local email clients and not a lot of people use that these days. There's a lot to dig into, so without further ado, we'll get started with the test. So we've got 1,205 items in a network location. These are all latest samples from our threat feed, and we'll use our usual automated solution, Malex, to perform the test on our main system. All of the data is on a network location, so we're basically simulating a network-based attack vector. Bitdefender has autopilot enabled, so it'll be taking care of the threats automatically for the most part. Our system is ready, so let's get testing. I'll also open up Task Manager here as the threats are being blocked by Bitdefender, so you can see how much of CPU the different processes are taking up. So you've got a live view of resource usage in real time. Now this is going to take a while, so we're going to use the power of editing to speed it up. All right, so our test is now complete and we ended up with a final proactive detection of 92.78%. Now, keep in mind, if you've been watching the channel for the last, you know, several months, we did introduce a lot of new samples to our feed, so it's possible that we have some false positives. However, looking at the system, it's quite clear that it's pretty much overwhelmed at this point. There's a lot of stuff executing. We've got some joke applications. Most of it looks like PUP. I don't see anything particularly threatening, but we'll see what I actually managed to get on the system. Okay, so it does seem like Bitdefender is doing some cleanup. Another thing to keep in mind is that the detection ratio that you see on the screen, that's the proactive detection. So it's also possible that Bitdefender could remove some of these threats reactively. We definitely have something at startup. This appears to be like a version of Log Me and Rescue. A lot of these are distributed um, as part of tech support scams. So that could be the reason that they're flagged and why we have them on the system because they are set to automatically start and connect to a certain server. So this would be in the domain of PUP. You probably don't want to have something like this running, but 
it's not exactly a typical malware application. The only reason you would flag it is because of the context in which it was installed. All right, so we've cleaned up the temp files and done a couple of second opinion scans. So Hitman Pro has found one piece of malware in a temporary location. So I'm not too concerned about this. This was picked up by Sophos and it's app data, local temp, and it does seem like it's a setup file. So it's possible that this was extracted by some malware. And then when it was actually executed, Bitdefender blocked it. Now Malwarebytes found something else. So here we've got some registry key values and a potentially unwanted program file and folder, two detections essentially. So the registry keys, and then we've got uh, the PC speed cap. This is a potentially unwanted program, PC optimizer, that kind of stuff. And all of this is obviously just different parts of one program. So again, we don't really have any serious infections on the system. All the major threats were blocked out, but we do have a couple of PUPs and system modifications. Now we're going to restore to snapshot and move on to the next part of the test, which is going to be very interesting. So what we're gonna do now is try to test specifically the advanced threat defense and the ransomware protection. So we're going to pick up some really infamous samples from the last five years, and we're going to try to execute it on the system. We will disable signatures for this part of the test since our goal is to understand what would happen in a situation where a malware is able to bypass the typical signature-based AV protection. So we're going to go ahead and turn this off, but we will leave advanced threat defense turned on as well as ransomware remediation. So as you can see, this is still turned on. So is ransomware remediation. So now we're going to grab some really infamous ransomware samples. A lot of interesting stuff here. We'll start off with one of the recent threats, Wasted Locker, which was responsible for the Garmin incident that cost millions. So we'll try this on this system and see if Bitdefender is able to protect us. Now, it should be understood that most of these threats would be blocked with the signatures, but we're trying to look at the other components here and whether or not they would be able to block a similar attack by a new ransomware that behaved in the same way. So that's what we're testing here. And there you go. So the moment we execute Wasted Locker, it pops up saying disinfection in process. So that's quite interesting. That was quite expedient. Again, just to remind you, real-time protection is turned off, so we're not using this shield, but it was still detected and moved to quarantine. So the feature that detected it here was the advanced threat defense. As you can see, it was blocked for suspicious behavior. Now we'll try to do the same with another recent variant, which is Black Claw. So we'll go ahead and rename it to executable, and then we'll run it and again, very quickly detected and blocked. So the behavior blocker is doing a great job here. The threats were blocked almost instantly. Now it is possible that it's querying the cloud to make these detections since they're happening so instantly. That's what gives me that idea. So what we're going to do now is we will try to turn off the network and see if we still are able to block these threats. We have now disconnected the network adapter. As you can see, we're no longer connected to the internet. Now let's see if the behavior blocker is still able to protect us. That'll give us an idea of whether these detections are happening on the system based on the behavioral analysis, or is this some kind of a cloud interaction? And there we go. Looks like server was blocked and our data is completely safe. Nothing has been touched. So that is good to know. As you can see, we've got a yellow alert for server.exe. This was picked up again by Advanced Threat Defense. So it does seem Bitdefender features a very robust behavioral shield on the system itself. Now we're gonna try something else. So we're going to turn off even the Advanced Threat Defense. Now we're going quite extreme here. So we're gonna turn everything off and the only thing we're going to look at is the ransomware remediation component because I don't want to see if it's able to roll back ransomware behavior. So we've got the automatic restore option turned on. Now we're going to execute some ransomware. So let's just go ahead with the first sample here. So we've got echo. Let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, it is able to successfully execute and create all its uh, ransom keys and encrypted versions of our data. 
but immediately we get a notification saying ransomware behavior remediated. So we're going to click on more details and as you can see, manifested ransomware behavior was blocked. Several files were encrypted, but we successfully restored all of them. And I can confirm by opening this. Ooh, that doesn't look like it was restored. That's quite interesting. Let's take a look at some of the other files. Nope, still encrypted. So that's quite interesting. Um, Bitdefender did detect the ransomware behavior and it said that it was remediated, but if we take a look at our documents, like the TXT files are still encrypted. Let's see if um, we can open this, nope. So the data inside is uh, pretty much gone. And that's true for each of these files. Now let's take a look at our pictures. Did something different happen there? Not really, so our pictures are also affected. Can't really open them. So that's quite interesting. So even though it says that all these files were restored, we can't really access them. Maybe this is something that's in process. So what I'm going to do is try to restart the system and see if any of this changes, like if something happens. All right, we're back after restarting the system and it looks like our data remains encrypted. Um, that's at least the case for these documents. And if we take a look at our pictures, we can access them. So now we're gonna try the same test with a different sample. We'll try this with wasted lockers. So I'm going to restore the system so we get our data back to normal. And then we'll again disable the same components and just try ransomware remediation because this is a really cool feature to test. And we will try executing wasted locker. And again, our data is encrypted quite quickly this time. Let's see if Bitdefender is able to detect this behavior. It is set to automatic restore, so it's supposed to notice this and roll back the changes. But again, that's not really the case. That's not happening here, at least not so far. In the case of Wasted Locker, it doesn't even seem to have picked up the behavior. So it did that for Echo, but not for Wasted Locker. So I would say this component is still very much in development. It should be noted that we did test advanced threat defense. So even if you had just the behavioral protection, it would be able to block the ransomware proactively, not allowing it to encrypt the data in the first place. So there you have it. That's my initial test of Bitdefender at all security. There's definitely a lot of interesting stuff here. Some of it may not be as polished. So I'm looking forward to testing it more in the future and seeing how it holds up in different scenarios. If you would like to buy this product or check it out, please use our affiliate link in the description. It helps support our tests and gives you the best price. I will be doing a comparison of this with Kaspersky coming up shortly, so stay tuned for that video. If you are a business and you'd like us to test your own security configuration or a specific product, feel free to reach out. That is a service that we do provide. We do consult with businesses quite regularly. You can contact us at the pcsecuritychannel.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more exciting cybersecurity content. Don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.